Damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, episode 345. Second week of August, 2023, I'm Ethan. I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. WWE SummerSlam is in the books, and I believe the show just ended. Uh, It's... (laughs) You beat me to it. I was going to say it's still going. But yes, same joke. Boy, was that a long program. <laughs> Look, these Peacock shows are what they are in as much as there's going to be a match once every half hour and there's going to be commercials for Mike's Harder Lemonade and mm-hmm. Bianca Belair is going to drink a C4 energy drink during her entrance <sighs> and these are Nick Khan specials. That's right. Slim Jim is going to sponsor a battle royal. That's right. Um, so you know what you're getting at this point. But even by... Usually there's good wrestling on these shows. And um, this time around, I didn't particularly enjoy the wrestling. And uh, there was even more Nick Khan uh, all over this show. <laughs> His fingerprints... His thumbprints were all over this program. Um, I don't want to be overly negative about SummerSlam, but uh, what did you think of it? Oh, I, if you don't, I will. Uh, no, I hated the show. I <laughs> thought every match was too long, and none of them were particularly good. And and also, there was a, you know, two and a half hours of the four-hour runtime seemingly was commercials and video packages and sponsored content. Uh, so yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't enjoy it. And, uh, as always, and we've talked about this before with AEW shows, even if the wrestling was spectacular, when you hit a certain point in the evening, uh, it's just too much. And you stop, I found it difficult to parse out. Is this main event a normal amount of how I find Roman Reigns matches annoying, or is this, a, uh, is this one not very good? And I'm still not really sure, but I do know it was very, very long. Uh, so it, that, that's just my general take on the show. It was too long, and I didn't think anything on the show was good enough to justify how long it went. We don't have to break everything down, but I do want to just hit quick bullet points on, on everything so far. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, Roman Reigns uh, beat Jey Uso. Jimmy turned on Jay. Mm. Uh, nonsensical. Yep. Really great angle that everybody loves so far. Um, now they've they've maybe gone a step too far. We'll see. <laughs> it's just one of those ones. It's like like a ninety, maybe like a late ninety eight, early ninety nine WCW angle where you go, oh, there's no plan here. They don't yeah. know what the end of this is. They right. they have no idea. So they're just they're just spinning spinning the wheels and uh, to keep it quote unquote fresh. We're just gonna do weird stuff that doesn't make uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. Sure. Ahead of time, we talked about the thing to do here was obviously Jay had to lose, and then Jimmy can come back and lay out Roman, and then you go and you do, go with Jimmy and Roman for another. <laughs> Three months or whatever, right? Like, and you do a three way or right. This whatever. this wrote itself. <laughs> it did not call for one twin brother turning on the other. Plus, I assume Roman's not working every show the rest of the year, so it's not even like you have to figure out something every every four weeks for him to do anyway. Right. Um, Bianca won the WWE Women's Championship and then lost it immediately to Io Sky who cashed in money in the bank. So um, kind of surprised. The only surprise to me here is that they didn't have Charlotte win the match and have you cash in on Charlotte because <laughs> you could gimmick up Charlotte to a 15 time champion that way. Yeah, they really, uh, they really missed, missed an opportunity there, but 
Yeah, I mean, good, good for EO. Um, not uh, yeah, didn't didn't love the match, but it was it was you know everybody worked hard and they they got they got where they needed to go, which is EO as the champion. Um, we Bianca, Bianca was great in that match. Everyone else, eh. yeah, she she yeah she worked she worked very hard. Um, and they kind of built the match around her being hurt and then coming or, you know, a worked injury and then coming back and fighting through and winning only to immediately have that stolen from her. So yeah, good, good, simple stuff. And you can, you can build to rematches with her and EO. And then you still have Asuka who theoretically would also want to rematch down the road. So you got, you got stuff to do. And given how little time the women get on SmackDown every week, we've got like the next nine months of SmackDown planned out. I would think. Sure. Seth Rollins beat Finn Balor, and this is they're I think they're they're going they're trying to make the Judgment Day drama on Raw, uh, the the bloodline drama of Raw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To uh to make the the problem with it, with that formula to me is that uh, Finn Balor ain't, ain't no Roman Reigns. Correct. <laughs> Fair. He loves his wife mm-hmm. as Roman does. But uh, it's also his entire personality is loving his wife, and he <laughs> he doesn't really put all of it into his work anymore. <laughs> they had they had a nice match though. Seth and Finn had a nice match at SummerSlam. Yeah, it was fine. It was you know among the matches that these two guys have had, um, it was one of them. I don't know, like it was yeah, it was it was solid. I didn't I didn't think anything was wrong with it. Just uh stop me if you've heard this before i thought maybe it went uh, a few minutes too long but yeah they're gonna try to build up to you know the damian briefcase stuff and you know and dom and Rhea and all they have their little side stuff and then yes just it's all judgment day all over the show all the time so hey i mean it, it worked for a few weeks here with the viewership so we'll see if that keeps up nxt did their biggest number in over two years with Dom <laughs> on the show this week. So if you don't get enough of them on Monday, you get, can get two more hours of it on Tuesday also. I think we talked about this off the air. I think I can't believe that they broke up most, if not all of the bloodline before doing like a survivor series match between judgment day and, and the bloodline. Like that just seemed like such a gimme to me, but well, they would have to plan things in advance. Right. <laughs> therein, lies the, therein lies the problem. Yeah. Uh, Gunther beat Drew McIntyre. He knew Gunther wasn't losing the Intercontinental title before he beat, tops the Honky Tonk Man. What? <laughs> huh? <laughs> he has to beat off the Honky Tonk mm. Man. Well, uh... Beat him off the list of mm-hmm. longest reigning intercontinental champions of all time. Gunther uh, needs to be on top of the honky tonk man. <laughs> so he accomplished that first by uh, pinning Drew's shoulders to the mat at uh, at SummerSlam. Uh, everybody, I don't know. Everybody, I don't know what everybody thought of this. Um, I, uh, I, Fell I was not literally asleep for most of this show. I was not literally asleep for any of this show. Figuratively, I was asleep for most of this show. <laughs> Nothing. I was totally zoned out. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Nothing on this show made any kind of an impact on me <laughs> until Bianca did landed on her, her feet on the floor and started selling her knee and screamed the f word <laughs> and selling and selling a a worked injury and making me making me believe a worked injury was real so uh that was probably at about three hours and 45 minutes into a four mm-hmm. and a half hour show <laughs> and uh the first six matches on this thing i was just totally zoned out yeah it was uh yeah the drew the drew gunther thing was i it was about what you would expect um and like you said everyone knew gunther was keeping the belt uh, I, and it was all just going to be like we talked about a matter of how how clean did he beat him and the answer is pretty clean we do we get honky on TV at some point here 
Oh gosh, are they are they in Arizona anytime soon or wherever he's currently living? Um, I don't think they are. But... I'll make, I mean, they could fly him in. I could see them bringing him in for like a backstage or something. Because yes. Sheamus has been doing a lot of shtick about how he's going to defend the honky tonk man's record. So maybe maybe he like comes out with Sheamus one week. It's it's, it's not impossible. All right. There was a worst match of the year candidate on this show. And um, here's here's how I know I'm on the right track. Um, talking about uh, a women's wrestling match. Jim Cornette called this one of the, quote, one of the best, most believable girls matches ever. Ugh. Unquote. <laughs> talking about uh, Shayna Baszler beating Ronda Rousey in an MMA rules match. And um uh, Whatever Jim Cornette's opinions are on women's wrestling, um, typically, if you believe the opposite, you are correct. Um, <laughs> I thought this is one of the worst matches I've ever seen and a pretty clear candidate for worst match of the year. The crowd sat on their hands and then they started turning on the match. It was a worked MMA match, which worked MMA never works. Correct. And uh, Sheena got uh, a black eye and uh, like a swollen face and maybe broke her arm uh, or tore ligaments in her arm uh, for real in a fake match that looked terrible. So this Shayna beat Ronda. Ronda's on, Ronda's on her way out and uh, possibly to fight UFC at 145. And uh, and there we go. I did. You hate this as much as I did. Yeah, it was it was dreadful. It's uh, I can't remember the last time there was something this bad on, like yeah, people poo pooed the uh, the the Gable Stevenson Baron Corbin match from the NXT show a week ago with that great finish, yeah, right with tremendous. Which yeah, I, to me that was like it was a guy who's never had a match on TV before wrestling a guy who's not great and they ring they, ring general Baron Corbin. Right, they had a yeah, they had a one star match. It wasn't good. But it's not like the worst thing you've ever seen. It still looks like pro wrestling. <laughs> For the most part, yes. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. This was just, it was bad. They they build it as MMA rules, which not surprisingly, WWE doesn't know what MMA rules are <laughs> because like they're doing sometimes the ref, and it seemed like the ref wasn't quite sure what he was doing because like yeah. Shayna gets knocked down and he's like pushing Ronda off to check on her. And then like he's like, should, is he going to do a 10 count? Like, like, is he doing a standing 10 count? No. Like, it just felt like the ref wasn't sure what to do and what his role was. It was just, it was bad. Like you said, worked MMA, you know, those, those blood sport shows that, uh, what Barnett runs on yeah. WrestleMania weekends, they, mm-hmm. they have a certain charm to them, uh, especially now. Cause you can get like all of those GCW shows for like six bucks on a <laughs> WrestleMania weekend. Um, right. There's a charm to them. Like I, I, I watched some a few matches from that show uh, this past year. There's a charm to that stuff, but they also like they do it up as like a big deal. They have they take out the ring ropes. Like it's a completely unique environment. Whereas this was just yeah two women doing bad bad fake grappling and bad fake punching in a uh, in a in a regular wrestling ring. <laughs> yeah, Barnett does it the best. I'll say he does fake MMA the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, LA Knight won the Slim Jim Battle Royal. By the way, um, there are these uh Macho Man Slim Jim holders on the counter of all the <laughs> local convenience stores here. Mm-hmm. I need one, and I don't want to pay 150 bucks for it on eBay. <laughs> so I need a hookup to get me one of those Macho Man Slim Jim holders that the um the convenient when the convenience stores get rid of them so uh just message me if you know how to do that thank you yeah you just keep an eye out <laughs> yeah <laughs> make some phone calls tonight <laughs> <laughs> yes uh la and i won this thing had to i guess what do you say about the prestigious slim jam slim jim summer slam battle royal is there anything to say no it was fine uh i just like that this 
leads to my ongoing favorite, my current ongoing favorite thing, which is that every few weeks there's a there's a post that uh, about how how high management is on L.A. Knight as they can continue <laughs> to book him as like a U.S. <laughs> champion level or lower guy. <laughs> Similarly to how they were very high on Butch and they were going to change his name back to Pete Dunn anytime now. <laughs> right. Uh, it's just, yeah. Oh, really likes guy. Also really high on Bronson Reed, uh, Champa, Nakamura, anybody that the internet uh, has any kind of affection for. Paul's a big fan of him. Just so you know. Yeah. And he's, and that push is coming. Yeah. Uh, Cody beat Brock pretty much had to. Did you catch the lie in the uh, press conference after the show where Triple H is like Brock took it upon himself <laughs> to shake Cody's hand and raise his arm <laughs> when the angle on the go home raw was Brock demanding Cody shake his hand? <laughs> it's like you've totally lost the plot, old man. What is wrong <laughs> with you? <laughs> yeah, just making up, just made it up on the on the spot. It just felt right, I guess. But yeah, that was. Paul doesn't tell the truth. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I was well. Speaking of this, uh, I don't know. Well, while we're on, while we're digging on Paul for his press conference, uh, <laughs> him and him and Becky are doing some little pithy things back and forth, which I think is pretty fun right now. It's delightful. <laughs> so it's delightful. So yeah. Uh, we, anyway, Cody Brock and Brock. Cody. Who cares? <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, who cares about Cody and Brock? Uh, uh, so. The only the only notable thing coming out of Cody and Brock is that Cody then like teased the Roman match again on his promo after uh, on Raw. So uh, at least in Cody's mind, the long term direction is still Roman versus Cody. So that's nice. But uh, yeah, Becky uh, is, was shoot big mad <laughs> that she was not on SummerSlam mm-hmm. and uh, Trish also shoot mad but not as big mad sure and uh she already had her vacation book to her uh lake house and uh for before her she sends her kids back to school she goes to the lake house every summer uh so she's on vacation she's not all that worried about it but becky big mad <laughs> and decided to subtweet pro wrestling insider um weird shot for someone who usually doesn't engage with the dirt sheet stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. She decided she was going to troll PW insider, which is very funny to me. (laughs) (laughs) They reported she was in Detroit. And for all I know, she was in Detroit on Thursday or whatever, doing media. Mm -hmm. And then she went home to California on Friday. (laughs) So then on Friday, they report on Thursday, hey, Becky's in Detroit. And then on Friday, she tweets from the beach in California saying, I'm not in Detroit. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, well, maybe you were when they reported this. What is it? Anyway, so then she posts, she's posting lemons and lemonade memes all weekend. And then Triple H takes a little dig at her in the <laughs> SummerSlam press conference about being somebody asked about her match being cut. I don't think they named Becky and Trish by name, but they're asked about matches being cut from this card. And he's like, well, nothing was cut from this card because we didn't announce a card. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, yeah. Promoter of the year, a uh, booker of the year there. Yeah, that's right. You had, had three matches announced five days before the show. <laughs> Great job killer job and he's like well sometimes you got to take lemons and make lemonade and so then becky came out on raw dressed as triple h not 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 uh not with the beard but she had a leather jacket on and then she uh was on commentary with a pitcher of lemonade and glasses of lemonade and uh and then did triple h's uh water spit with the (laughs) lemonade it's a delightful little back and forth that I'm sure they've worked out behind the scenes and they've now turned it into a little angle to amuse themselves and amuse the fans that know. But uh, that was just delightful. We need more more pettiness in this business. Absolutely. And my last note on Paul's wonderful variety show press <laughs> conference uh, was when Bill After asked why uh, the U.S. champion was in a battle royal. Yeah. And and Paul's like, guess because he was trying to win it. 
<laughs> be nice to Bill after. He's like 95 years old. Yeah, Bill after is shoot like 80. <laughs> Don't be me. Come on, Paul. It's freaking Bill after. <laughs> He's like he's not your enemy at those things. All right? No, literally no one except Brandon Thurston asks a real question <laughs> at those things. Be nice to Bill, Paul, for God's sake. They're gonna shut down Thurston pretty soon here if they haven't already. I was gonna say I can't believe he even gets invited. I mean, I assume they won't call on him soon, but yeah, I've heard. I I think maybe the first one of these was kind of a shoot press conference Mm -hmm. and then they can't help themselves and they had to start working it a little bit. And I'm not saying that the questions are worked, but they pick like, you know, (laughs) they pick friendly, quote unquote, media. Uh Right. And if you're not friendly, quote unquote, media, you don't get invited. So, yeah, we'll see how long. (laughs) We'll see how long uh, Thurston keeps getting invited to these things. Uh, Logan Paul beat Ricochet in the opener at SummerSlam, uh, and they made uh, Samantha Irvin announce Ricochet as the winner. That's right. Samantha Irvin's really good at her job. I like it. I don't quite understand. I think everyone has just had really bad ring announcing for a decade or so, and um, so they react to competent ring announcing as if it's the greatest ring announcing of all time. (laughs) But Samantha does a nice job, and uh, I I don't I don't like them doing angles with her though. That that it just feels I, I don't trust their intentions. <laughs> but well, Logan Logan had to go out first. I was gonna say historically when they start doing angles with ring announcers, it's not because it doesn't end up with like the ring announcer having a good time, <laughs> <laughs> whether it's Howard Finkel. Whether it's Lillian Garcia, generally they put them on television to embarrass them. Just historically, that's usually what w- what the WWF does with their with their ring announcers when they start well, putting them on TV. Specifically, they've the one angle they did with Lillian that wasn't involving Finkel being stripped to his underwear. They stripped her to her underwear. Mm-hmm. When Vince was Vince had his head shaved and decided to hide under her dress. <laughs> Jeez, that's what a bunch of perverts. Yeah. <laughs> or they would make fun of Lillian for looking like a horse. Yeah, Triple H would just do that. The night the like... nicest woman, the one of the three nicest women in wrestling, and they would make fun of her because they thought she looked like a horse. Mm-hmm. What the F? Cool guys. What the F? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with these people? Well, you know, you you grow up and you're not the cool guy in school, and then and you get to run a wrestling company. It's time to uh, turn around and be the guy who used to pick on you. Now you get to be that guy. I guess <laughs> take it uh, out on William <laughs> Garcia, and poor nine thousand year old Bill After. <laughs> Lillian, Bill After, Samantha Irvin, Becky. Lynch. Problem is. You don't bring you don't bring a water gun to a knife fight. <laughs> and that's what Paul's done in picking on Becky. <laughs> the thing is like Paul's unable to he has a terrible poker face. Yes. Like he can't hide when he, like he can be he can fire off like a quick one liner, but yes. you know he's shoot big mad and yes. gotten to over it. And yes. that is where he is at a disadvantage with someone like <laughs> Becky. <laughs> yes. Paul very sharp um witty funny mm-hmm. funny guy mm-hmm. but yes to your point no poker face whatsoever <laughs> oh it's just it's not a fair fight um Kyrie sane apparently coming back pw insider reported she was in detroit and the implication was she was going to uh appear on SummerSlam in some form or fashion that didn't happen. She was probably just there to sign her contract. But she has some dates to finish up in Japan first. Um, Kyrie coming back, kind of surprising to me in that they didn't treat her very well. And Charlotte tried, uh, allegedly tried to concuss her about 75 times until <laughs> Becky Lynch physically hid her under the ring so that Charlotte couldn't hit her no more. 
Yep. And that that's that was kind of the end of her in-ring career in WWE. Uh, I well, know she she came back and got concussed by Nia a few times during uh during the COVID. Oh, I forgot times. about that. Oh, I forgot about that. They were just trying to kill her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh! And then she worked as an ambassador and like did Japanese commentary for them for a couple for like two years until her contract mm-hmm. ran out. Um, I don't I don't know. Any thoughts on Kyrie? I don't know. Maybe maybe she's just looking at it as a, uh, you know. She had some concussions before she went to WWE. She's gotten some concussions in and post WWE. And maybe she's just looking at it as a way of, I'm ready to just move to Florida and and just cash the checks. <laughs> and I, I guess. And or maybe maybe she, maybe they'll even put her in NXT or something. I don't know. Um, I mean, I wouldn't because she's instantly going to be like the best person in the company when she gets here. But, <laughs> um. Yeah, I uh, the thing to me is how do you how do you, how do you how does she work out anything resembling a full schedule? That's that's sure. my thing. It's like she's uh she's like the most natural baby face of all time, and they took her and they and they <laughs> made her a heel for no reason, and it's like oh. oh she just naturally because she's a fantastic pro wrestler, she became like the third best heel in the company. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like. But the, the thing is, for, you mentioned the injuries. It's like they start piling up. They wouldn't clear. Her. <laughs> it's, I guess she's cleared now. Sure. How do you? Re- wor- I, yeah, I think working in Florida is probably the best way to to maximize that. But anyway, sorry, I went on a weird tangent there. <laughs> uh, the merger is expected to close. Mm-hmm. The UFC WWE merger expected to close. The TKO company. Speaking of Paul, officially off, uh, not not on the board going nope. forward. WWE still has a board member they can name, but uh, Paul not on the list so far. Mm-hmm. So Endeavor gets to pick six board members. WWE gets to pick five, and uh, the list of of uh, ten so far. 10 of the 11 have been named and Paul not on the list. So did Vince bring uh, what's his name? The two X CEOs that helped him coup. They're not <laughs> on the board. Uh, they're not on the board. Okay. Um, Michelle Wilson and uh, George Berrios. Right. They're, they're not on the board. Um, they were, <laughs> maybe he can give, he, he'll give them one seat to share. <laughs> <laughs> Co board members, yes, they were co presidents or co CFOs <laughs> or whatever before, right. but, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's happening. Uh, if you have WWE stock, look, this is not financial advice, right? <laughs> All I'll say is this if you have WWE stock, hold on to it, maybe even buy more, yeah. <laughs> It was, I mean, again, also less, even less of an expert than you. Uh, it was traded higher than Disney for a little bit this week. <laughs> like it's, it's looking good. Yep. And I mean, it's gonna, and you'll, you'll get cashed out when the merger goes through. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, and the price, look, whatever the the merger price, I think it was like 120 bucks. If it's not 120 bucks yet. <laughs> You need to still be buying if it's not at 120 bucks yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. That this is free money. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's an absolute fun game to play. You just put a put a hundred bucks in a Robin Hood account. It's anyway. It's not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> do not come to me for financial advice. Trust me, it's the stupidest thing you could do. All right. Um. Let's see. Touch on. Uh, New Japan here real quick. G1 winding down. The final four are Okada wrestling Evil and Naito wrestling Osprey. Those matches are on Saturday and then the winners of those matches will wrestle on Sunday for the G1 championship. So of the final four we have let's see we have a block winner in Naito, and we have three a block winner in Okada, and then we have two second place finishers in Osprey and Evil. So I hated the format this year. 
and um um I I don't know what we're getting here. We could get we could get another Osprey and Okada. We I think that's the most likely. Yeah, I mean, because because I mean, it's like, well, evil's not <laughs> evil's not winning the G one. Evil did beat the world champion in the quarterfinals, sure. so we're getting an evil title match here in the next couple of months. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. Those are that's that's like. Other than the Thunderdome, <laughs> yeah, my defining memory of pro wrestling in COVID times is evil Bullet Club main events. I know he's House of Torture now, but yes, I- IWGP champion, Whoa. evil, yikes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's like, well, Naito, Naito, Naito's all hold together with with glass and tape, and they've already kind of set up Suji as the new like main eventer <laughs> of. Lij, well, I they, guess you could do Naito, but yeah, I think Osprey and Okada is the finals, and you know I wouldn't be shocked if Osprey were to win that, even though they just had um they had Osprey beat Okada in the tournament, mm-hmm. um, because I thought the the Wrestle Kingdom plan was Okada and Danielson. Right. In a re- in a rematch, but maybe they're not counting on that anymore because Danielson is now in the uh, Johnny Gargano stage of his career where he gets hurt every time he wrestles, <laughs> and is not going to be back for all in. Little so maybe counting on him for January is not something they're doing anymore because it's hard to believe that they would like his Will Osprey and Sonata is a Wrestle Kingdom main event. I don't, I don't know about that. Right. But uh and Sonata and Okada seems much more like a thing that they would do. <laughs> but um I also can't necessarily see I, I don't know. We'll see what they do. Um uh, we mentioned all in that's uh that's your tremendous G one update. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome everyone. And uh not financial advice and a bad G one update. That's what I give you here. Um AEW. Um, uh, boy, this week's dynamite sure was an episode of dynamite, wasn't it? No one can deny that it was two hours long. It mm-hmm. were pro- professional wrestling matches and interview segments on it. Yeah. So uh, we didn't do a show. Uh, we did do a show last week. What am I sure talking did. about? <laughs> she is. Uh, she is still the champion, mm-hmm. the women's champion, and they put together a tournament. <laughs> I love when they announce a tournament. <laughs> it's like this tournament starts tonight. There's six people in it. All right. <laughs> There's is seven people in it. The normal number. Oh, right. Because Tony, they didn't have an eighth woman. So the champion had to defend her belt to get into this into this match. But the former champion just got a got a buy right to the match. Right. Here's what tells you that we really planned and thought this well out. We announced a women's title match for Wednesday on like Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then by the time Wednesday rolled around, it was also a first round tournament match. What? Look, (laughs) I'm, I'm delighted that it's not a Sheeta, uh, Soraya singles match. Honestly, (laughs) Soraya looks like she'll be involved, but it won't be a singles match. And I think that's for the best. Yeah, so uh, they've added some stuff to um, All In, which is coming up in like two and a half weeks now at this point. MJF and Cole, we already know, for the world title. They've added MJF and Cole challenging for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship on the pre-show. What? (laughs) They're going to wrestle Aussie Open on the pre-show. What? (laughs) It's like one of me thinks... Because I I'm thinking the turn is not happening at this show, so I think this is going to lead to them winning those belts, and then that gives them an excuse to have to defend them against the kingdom, and that will pay off our Rod Roderick Strong, the friend Cuck, and his new pals Matt Taven and and Mike Bennett, uh, versus Adam Cole and MJF. So yeah. so that's my thought. 
why it has to happen on all out or all, all in i don't know you have another show the following weekend that you could have this match on if you really wanted to but hey what what do i know really weird um Sheeta versus tony storm versus spoiler alert Soraya versus either Britt Baker or the Bunny in a four way for the w- women's world title. You think the Bunny will beat Britt and the Bunny will get to be on Wembley? I mean, the I mean, ratings juggernaut, the Bunny, <laughs> famously defeated Roman Reigns in the demo on the uh, on a rampage once, but no, I don't I don't see her getting the big W over uh, over Dr. Baker here. The tribal chief. The bunny. That's right. The original tribal chief. That's yeah. right. You know, people will forget that Sasha and Becky had a banger on that SmackDown. Did they? It did. I believe you. I just, like you said. <laughs> people only remember the bunny beating Roman Reigns, and they don't remember Be- Becky and Sasha had a great match on that uh on that SmackDown on FS1, the third hour of SmackDown on FS1, <laughs> the Friday Night War, which <laughs> is a thing. It, just for fun, one week, you yes. know, just for no reason. We're just going to do a third hour. Yeah. Um, A tag team coffin match, because why not? <laughs> Darby Allen and Sting versus the Mogul Embassies, Swerve Strickland and AR Fox. Sure. Sure, why not? You no, know, I... <laughs> I've said this, I feel like a thousand times. Swerve, one of my favorite guys on, oh, uh, on AEW coolest. television. He's the coolest. Incredibly cool, but still a great heel. Yep. Um, walks walks that line. Doesn't do it, doesn't does a lot of cool moves, but doesn't do a lot to get himself cheered. In his own mind, he's not a cool heel, right? Correct. And that is a big the vibe. <laughs> the yes. vibes are important here, and he's great at that. That yeah. being said, he is clearly. A disciple of Lucha Underground. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, obviously, the whole AR Fox connection comes from them, I think, being partners and also feuding in, in Lucha Underground. But uh, they did they did that angle where they like attempted murder on young Nick Wayne a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, ooh, you know, he avoided the the NXT acting classes, but uh it was too late because this guy this guy wants to do cinematic matches. I can just tell. <laughs> it's, the, it's the second really bad cinematic swerve angle that we've seen on TV. Remember when he kidnapped Billy Gunn and broke his fingers with pliers so he couldn't scissor anymore? <laughs> One of the worst things I've ever seen. Yes. Yeah. Um, very much in the same vein. Yes. But... I, you know, that's another one of those ones where I saw just, I saw a lot of people going, that's cringe. That's, you know, that's silly. And I saw just as many people going, this is incredible. This is one of the best angles I've this seen. AEW. Yeah, this is cinema, generational, <laughs> et cetera, and so forth. <laughs> um, so let me just say, I think the match will be fun and probably very brutal. And I hope Sting's okay. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, the other three guys are certainly, but I'm sure the other three guys will just take all the insane bumps for him and then he'll do a a dive onto the pile or whatever you th- you'd think right and then last time he <laughs> he decided he was gonna do a jeff hardy jump off the ladder that's true off the ladder and he undershot it <laughs> and put his tooth through his lip <laughs> like, was, what? you know it's <laughs> funny when he came out on on dynamite he goes like where's sting been he didn't yeah. really do anything to write him off. I was like, oh, that's right. Last time he was on the show, he almost died. Probably right. probably took a little time off to heal. He's been recovering from dental surgery. <laughs> Jeez. Forgot about forgot about his near death when he tried to splash <laughs> Sammy through the table or whatever. Like three nights after Sammy almost accidentally killed him on pay-per-view. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you remember that? Yes, I do remember that because it was like an impossibly bad match given that it had Jericho and Suzuki and Sting and Darby in it, but somehow it was awful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good times. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Sting's back and he's going to do another hardcore match. What could go wrong? Yeah, it's fantastic. Speaking of uh, guys, old guys doing hardcore stuff, uh, Rob Van Dam was on Dynamite this week. What'd you think? 
Uh, he could he can still do all the signature Rob Van Dam stuff. I was a little worried on the Rolling Thunder about that last rotation, but he got yeah. over on everything. Um, you know, did the leg drop from the apron to the guy on the barricade, did the the, the Rolling Thunder and the Van Terminator and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, they built the match around all his signature stuff. It looked great. I don't need to see him. This sounds harsh ever again. But for a one-off as part of this this <laughs> weird Jungle Jack Perry versus ECW storyline um, that theoretically <laughs> is leading to Hook coming back, I guess. Um, sure, it was a fine one-off. And as we spoke off the air, RVD also had the good fortune of following a Matt Hardy match. So, I mean, comparatively, as far as wrestlers who can still do their signature stuff and still have it look pretty good. Uh, RVD could not have picked a better spot on the show to ha- have had his match, I feel. Yeah, speaking of uh, the uh, the Hardys, they wrestled the Young Bucks on uh, on Dynamite. And mm-hmm. um, um, I thought Jeff looked the best he's looked since he's been back. <laughs> I think the bar is very low. <laughs> But the Young Bucks are going to be wrestling FTR at uh, at Wembley at All In. And, uh, you know, we're one step closer to getting the trios matches that everybody wants. We'll see. Um, yeah, that's where we're on the uh, we're on the road to it. <laughs> Everybody's in the company for at least a couple more years. So there's time to to wear everyone down. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think the elite agreeing to wrestle FTR was a stipulation of them getting this contract? Seems could... it seems like it to me, but I don't know that for sure. Sure, yeah, I could I could see that being a uh, part of the bartering <laughs> of this deal, and uh, you know, I just hope the, the Bucks win because uh, then Dax will be really sad about it. <laughs> it's it's good. He'll be shoot mad because he lost his fake belt. Yeah, we know how much he loves his fake belts, including the Raw <laughs> and SmackDown <laughs> championships that he's so proud of winning. He puts it on his gear. Yep, ten time FTR or whatever. That's right. Um, collision. And this pains me to say because I am the number one Tony Khan hater. <laughs> um, Collision is probably the best pro wrestling show every week. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we'll just do what everyone who watches WWE do and just give all the credit to, to the guy you like and none of the credit to the guy actually booking it. Yeah, it's the thing people, you've mentioned this before, people used to say, look, Vince doesn't even go to SmackDown. Hunter's definitely booking mm-hmm, SmackDown mm-hmm. when there would be like, you know, I don't know, what was what used to be good on that show, AJ Styles? Right. <laughs> There would be like two shows that were pretty good in a row and people would be like, oh, my God, is Vince dead? Yeah. Yeah. That's what people do with Collision. And they're like, uh, oh, Cornet especially. Like, and it's like, it's like, it, oh, it's like, how dumb can you be? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Tony's going to micromanage every aspect of his business except two hours of primetime television on Saturday nights. <laughs> it's like, no. This guy goes to house shows, right? <laughs> it's like, of course he's booking it. Maybe he takes more input for the Saturday shows. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's just decided I want this to have a very different feel. Anyway, it pains me to say <laughs> collision is probably the best pro wrestling, pro wrestling show every week. Um, Smackdown is an easy watch too, because it's two hours. There's a lot of commercials and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they they build to a main event usually, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, Collision's been good. What did you think of uh, Rick Steamboat's uh, angle last week? Yeah, I saw I saw he specifically requested it, which I appreciate. Um, he requested that Ricky Starks beat him down. Yeah, huh? So what do you know about that? Yeah, so I don't know if that's him England for another payday or him just uh, just wanting the the heel to get something out of it since he was losing. Um, but either way, um, yeah, I did. I did see that note. I, f- I forget if it was Fightful or, or who had that note, but somebody, somebody definitely uh, said this week that it was uh, Ricky Steamboat's idea for that for the uh, the post match angle. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a it was a fun inclusion. It's obviously it's a throwback to a thing that Punk did in two thousand four. Right, <laughs> he's getting very self referential uh, on his on his show that definitely yes. he is booking. Yeah, um, no, uh, Tony Tony loves old ROH, obviously, but so bringing in Steve Bode is fun though. He didn't look uh, the only the only problem I thought was that at the end, of course, he's the outside enforcer. Right. And at the end, of course, the outside enforcers got to jump in the ring and count the pin because the ref is down. Right. And so, but Ricky is like 69. He's, he's 70, 70. 69 or 70. Yeah. So, uh, and he's on the floor. And when Punk rolls Ricky up, so Punk had uh, Ricky in a schoolboy pin for like 15 seconds while Ricky <laughs> got into the ring and got in position, uh, seemingly. But otherwise, I thought it was good. And then you, if you were going to beat Ricky Starks here two weeks after giving him his big win, then at least theoretically he got his heat back and, and he's a, uh, he's a full fledged heel. Now he's beaten down, beaten down legends. So uh, the, the people are not in the same place they were at the start of the match. So that's something that it is uh, coming out of it. I have no idea what they're doing on this show. The booking doesn't make a whole <laughs> lot of sense to me we'll still. See. Yeah, Punk's wrestling Joe at All Out, it appears, or at least Joe made the challenge. But before that, Punk and FTR are challenging the House <laughs> of Black for the trio's title this weekend. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? So Starks just gets to move on. Anyway, I guess you can have a lot of balls in the air at the same time, and maybe they rematch at um, All Out the weekend after All In. But... Could be. Joe versus Punk, is that going to be for the real world championship or the ROH television championship or both? Hopefully, hopefully it's for both. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, also coming up on Collision this weekend, Chris Statlander, Will Nightingale, Wrestling Diamante, and Mercedes Martinez. Um, so Statlander beat Mercedes Martinez in a pretty good match on Collision last weekend mm-hmm. um, uh, to keep the TBS title. And that they did the thing where Mercedes Martinez jumped right after the match to get her heat back. And then Diamante ran in for the Russo save, which is where you act like you're going to make the save, but it's very clear that it's going to be a swerve. And mm-hmm. uh, Diamante and Mercedes Martinez are now aligned. Um, I, whatever. Like, it, there's far more offensive angles every week on every <laughs> show, but that annoyed the hell out of me. Yes, it was um, very, it was very telegraphed. I will say, and I saw, I think Punk was interviewed by Sports Illustrator or somebody, and one of the things he mentioned is that he would like to see more like women be ex- exclusive or more specifically used on Collision more. So it's like you already kind of had Willow in that spot, but everybody else, it was just kind of a woman's match was added to the show every week. So right, you got Mercedes and Diamante. I mean, it's weird that the TBS champion is going to be wrestling on TNT every week, but Sure. Chris wasn't really doing anything on dynamite. So, you know, you've got, you've got like a little stable, a little core group that you can, you know, plug and play for a little bit with, uh, with people that aren't really getting used on dynamite. So that's something. Yep. That's fun. Uh, collision, usually a pretty fun watch. So every week, I'm not going to lie. Plus it every week collision has the real star of the show, which is juice Robinson <laughs> and his, and his cardboard cutout of uh, Jay, Jay White, which he has named Cardblade. <laughs> yes. A lot of shtick with Jay White and uh, and Tony Storm, maybe now somewhat exclusive to that show. She did a uh, a, a, a Kristen Wiig character. <laughs> um, not, I'm not knocking it. It's just like I've seen Kristen Wiig play like the 1950s actress on saturday night live a hundred times mm-hmm. and it's it's very much that anyway people um anytime i look at twitter during the ew program tony storm's trending and once you click through all the things that are just pictures of her thighs um <laughs> everyone is like oh i think i'm in love with her and it's like uh hello welcome to six years ago where have you been <laughs> where have you been <laughs> Uh, yeah i mean again she's she's not the champion anymore seems like maybe she's going to be pushed aside post 
post I mean post her her rematch in this big four way. Yeah. Um. So hey, putting putting her on this show as a heel for Chris or Willow or whoever else to feud with, uh, is good. And yeah. hey, maybe maybe you could even do more than one woman's match on the show. Maybe you could. Maybe maybe you can you can one up the fact. You mean you got you she does main event to dynamite two weeks in a row. Just keep just keep one upping uh, one upping the Fed and and book a second women's match on your shows just to really really twist the knife. That is terrific. All right, uh, we've covered the globe here. Is there uh, anything else that you'd like to discuss? No, that's uh, I think we've covered it all. All right, everybody. Well, till next time, I'm Ethan and I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories. Oh, wait a minute. Re Ripley and Buddy Matthews are engaged. Oh. Well, good luck. I'm sure it will work out for young buddy. It always does. All right. We'll be back soon with more stories for the rest of life. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. A mulled wine, heavy on the cinnamon, light on the cloves. Off you go. <laughs> Look, oh. buddy, we serve hard liquor from <laughs> we serve cheap liquor for men who want to get drunk fast. <laughs> Out you two pixies go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a rum punch. <laughs> Joseph! I think I've shared this story. I've maybe even shared it on the air before. But uh, there's... Uh, I don't listen to Conan's podcast very often, but I listened to it uh, when he had Jim Gaffigan on. And <laughs> Jim Gaffigan started doing an impression of Nick from It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is just for me. This is... <laughs> Right. This is a comedy bit just for me. Uh because he just he, yeah, he just does Nick for like three and a half minutes. It's like, yeah, that's perfect. That's that's all I've ever wanted. I'll take all of that that you have. <laughs> Correct. Yep, that's uh that that's for me. That's just once in a while so you stumble across uh somebody doing a bit or a joke or whatever, and you're like, oh yep, that one was I don't know how he knew, but that's exactly what I have always wanted. Even I didn't know that's exactly what I've always wanted. <laughs> right. But I wanted to hear Jim Gaffigan do a three and a half minute bit where he pretends to be Nick from uh, from It's a Wonderful Life. I try to keep on keeping on.